Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Tuesday, the 17th of July, 2018. Remember this yesterday? It was code red. Well, today it's yellow, 20% chance of development down from 70 yesterday out here. That's Hawaii, and uh, it kind of looks like a fish, doesn't it? A little yellow fish. Um, this isn't going to develop. So the eastern Pacific, the central Pacific, really not... Um, problematic right now and you know it looked like we were going to have a very busy season granted it's only mid-july and this could get real active out here in no time at all but for the foreseeable future that is not happening even this system here 20 percent chance the rising motion the mjo as it's called the madden julian oscillation is over in the western pacific and that being the case really not that much impetus to get things going in the Western Hemisphere, all right? So most of the activity, which there really isn't that much anyway, will be occurring out in the West Pack where another typhoon should develop soon. But even it doesn't look that strong in the model fields just yet. And of course, the Atlantic Basin nice and quiet now and for the next 120 hours out to five days. Satellite imagery, this is the visible animation from Levi Cowan's site. And you can see this very large tropical wave maybe just the slightest cyclonic turning with it but you can also see the outline of the Saharan dust that has extended all the way across lots of photographs taken from anywhere from skydivers to people flying on commercial airline flights from here to there flying through the Saharan air layer Uh, it's kind of like this year's buzzword the SAL the Saharan air layer I guess it's better than Irma and Harvey, and and there's no I guess. I mean, for people, absolutely, it's a lot better than the alternative. And that being said, this whole region through here is going to be very quiet over the next week to 10 days, it does appear, and I'm pretty confident with that. Uh, It's climatologically what should happen, and of course, with the MJO not being in this part of the world uh, favoring upward motion, there's literally this cap, if you will, just like a blanket of sinking air put over this region. So no worries if you have a cruise or you just want to enjoy the beach without worrying about tropical troubles. No problems there. We do have this front, though, that's coming down again, another trough. And so you're going to have unsettled weather along the Gulf Coast, maybe a low pressure area that tries to form uh, off the mid Atlantic and moving up towards the northeast. We'll look at that in more detail towards the end here. I want to show you this, the Southern Oscillation Index, again, positive for today, Uh, 3.51 is today's contributor, that's positive, the 90-day has come up a little bit to only negative 2.5, and the 30-day, 2.76 negative, they're both basically meeting here, and remember, the number that the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia, they typically cite minus 7 as the index value, and sustained at that where you get the El Nino threshold in the atmosphere. And so we are you know, a ways from that. And these numbers coming up here, you can clearly see it was headed down and now you know, coming back up a little bit. So this is another speed bump in the road to the El Nino that we have heard a lot about lately. So speaking of that, I wanted to show you this. Uh, the Nino regions, the Enso regions here, kind of like a Venn diagram but not exactly you know there's a little bit of overlap here with the 3-4 area but what I want to show you you've got the Nino 1-2 region right off the coast of South America large box indicating the Nino 3 area and then you got the Nino 4 and then this overlap here the Nino 3-4 this is the one where the most attention seems to get paid I see Dr. Klotzbach at Colorado State and other agencies that forecast hurricane seasonal activity cite this the most, the Nino 3.4 number. And that being said, I wanted to show you these charts here from, again, Levi's site. Check this out. The Nino 1-2 index, valid this morning, minus 0.8. So almost a degree, we'll just, we'll we'll be conservative. We'll call it just a little over three quarters of a degree Celsius below the long term average. It was briefly at Nino thresholds there. Typically, the measurement of 0.5 or higher, try to draw that in, 
uh, is your Nino threshold, El Nino threshold minimum. Uh, most people that follow this and track it look at 0.5 and higher as being the minimum threshold. So we were there uh, in May, and then, boom, it dropped off, and it has stayed below the long-term average of neutral since then. And today's contributor, you know, getting close to minus one again. So no El Nino in the 1.2 area, the 1.2 area. The Nino 3 area, which again covers a pretty large area, that red area, right? It's also headed down. So it's only a little bit more than a tenth of a degree Celsius above normal. You know, there's the uh, average line right there. Normal, I guess you'd call it, or average. That's the better way to call it. What's normal, right? It's average. So we're getting close to average again in the Nino 3 area. And it, too, briefly touched upon um, Nino, El Nino thresholds. And then we looked finally at the 3-4 area. And this one, to me, <laughs> is the most interesting because, yes, it, too, has been really plummeting in recent days, getting closer to the neutral again. Uh, I'm going to tell you what, if this goes below, even for a day or two, <laughs> You can forget an El Nino in time to really disrupt the Atlanta hurricane season. And speaking of that, interesting date in history. Let's look at that time position right there. What day is that? The next marker is July 3rd. So that one is July the 2nd. What happened on July 2nd? Phil Klotzbach and his team uh, released, well, the work of his team, and then Dr. Klotzbach released from Colorado State University the updated outlook for July for the rest of the hurricane season. He'll do it again in August, I do believe. And that's when the downgrade, if you want to call it that, came, calling for a below-average season. And then look what happened immediately after he did that. It just dropped, came up a little bit, and it really fell off the cliff. Now, I am not laughing at Dr. Klotzbach. This just shows you. Sometimes the weather will play funny games with you, won't it? Uh, I remember uh, right before Beryl and Chris formed, I said, you know, hey, I'm going to be taking a couple of days to travel. I had to go up to Raleigh and uh, do some college searching stuff with my daughter. And there was something else I had to do. I was going to be gone like a Tuesday and a Thursday or something like that. And look what happened. Beryl and Chris formed. You know, it always happens like that, doesn't it? It's like poor Phil. Now, this may not change much, and, you know, I mean, he's a Ph.D., and I'm not. Uh, but that's interesting. July 2nd is when he issued the forecast for a below-average season, and a lot of that. And he even cited, and this is worth pointing out, he even cited that this looked like it was going to be in El Nino territory. You know, so not so much for what it's worth. All right, so looking out ahead at the next uh, – several days to a week here let's just get this I want to show you what's what west coast of Africa right here a little tropical wave action and some monsoon trough coming off Africa huge area of high pressure out over the Atlantic the Bermuda Azores high when the high is centered more over the Azores it's the Azores high sometimes it'll center itself more over Bermuda and it's the Bermuda high sometimes it can stretch across the entire Atlantic like that uh, and that's when you really have to watch out for hurricanes, etc. Sometimes you get a strong Bermuda high and a weak Azores high further north and some kind of a central Atlantic trough in between. All kinds of configurations. But for now, it's centered right over the central Atlantic and all that high pressure nosing down, keeping the intertropical convergence zone at bay. Uh, you know, it's a typical July pattern, honestly. Troughiness over the east, you know, if this persists through September and October, uh, August, September, October even, no hurricanes will hit us from the east. But you know it won't persist. And I'll show you some hints of that as we put all this into motion. Over the next seven days, troughiness, yep, it lifts out a little bit. A little bit of energy tries to form. You'll see that here as we get into Sunday. This is Friday. This is Saturday. And then look, right Saturday night into Sunday, this little piece of energy around this upper level low, a reflection of such at the surface, right off the Del Marva here. You'll notice that on Sunday. Kind of a hybrid system, mid-latitude storm, probably not even subtropical because water temperature is up there where that happens. Right through here, watch, I'll do the loop again. 
uh, just not warm enough, but kind of a nor'easter deal. You know, if it was February, it would be like, whoa, big time snows are coming for somebody, but it's not. <laughs> it's the middle of the summer. So watch that reflection right there, that little surface low. Well, it will be at the surface. This is the 5,000 foot level. But let me stop this and show you the very end of the run. So here's the first part of the run, and you notice how the high is centered generally out here in the central Atlantic. Now, let's go to the very last frame. Aha! See? This is what I'm talking about. This is why you have me here, to kind of look at this and, you know, it's only seven days out. Now, it's further to the west, farther to the west, whatever. And, you know, still a little bit of leftover troughing, but the troughing moving west. As we get towards August, there are indications that the Bermuda High will build in stronger and more westerly to be more in that configuration and lowering of pressures overall over here. And that's interesting because what happens in August, that's the typical uptick in hurricane activity. So something to keep an eye on over the next week to 10 days and beyond. All right, so fairly short today. I think I kept it to the point. Not a lot happening, so we talk about other things. Later this week, uh, Thursday or Friday, somewhere in that time frame, definitely going to go over sea surface temperature anomalies from the perspective of how are they derived? What's the background data set? How do you get these averages for something to be a departure from? Right? You know, if you have an average, how'd you get those numbers? And uh, we'll delve into that and hopefully bring on a special guest to help explain it as well. All right? I'm working on it. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. As always, thanks for tuning in. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, now's a good time to do so. Hit the uh, notification button because if you want to have a, you know, a little ding on your phone or whatever that I've posted a video, that's the way to do it. And don't forget, if you've got our app, Hurricane Impact, whenever I do these videos, as soon as it's done rendering on YouTube's network, it's live in the app. And also for all of our Patreon supporters, we're knocking on the door of about 60 right now. I post the link to these videos there and our subscriber site first. And it's, you know, no commercials or anything. It's a clean feed, as you say. It's about a 15 minute head start that I give you. Just a little edge, I guess. And that's for all the Patreon supporters, whether it's a dollar or, you know, some of our longer term sustaining members, some of which are, you know, $100 a month, which is really helping to support what I do. But just trying to give you something in return and reminding you of that. If you want it first, that's how you can do it. All right. Anyway, I do appreciate you watching. It's awesome. The feedback's great. The comments, everything. Uh, a great group of people out there. And how smart you are, too. It's really impressive. So congratulations. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. We shall talk again some more tomorrow.